Welcome to Ask Stuff on the Cargo's channel. In today's video, I'm going to explain how the multi port fill system works. So, you're going to learn how the fuel is pressurized and sent to the injectors so the injectors can deliver the correct amount of fuel to each cylinder when they need it. And you're also going to learn about the main components. That way, you'll be able to understand the system. And once you understand how these parts work, you'll be better able to troubleshoot any issues that may appear on your vehicle as it gets older. So I'm going to bring the camera up close as I show you what these components are and what they do so you can understand it better. On multi-port fuel injection systems you're going to find a fuel pump module inside your fuel tank. The fuel pump module is going to contain a fuel pump, a fuel pump strainer, the fuel tank sending unit with a float, and most fuel pumps are going to have two lines. Uh, once the larger line is going to be the supply line and the smaller line is the return line. So the supply line obviously is connected directly to the fuel pump. And how this works, when you first turn your key on, if you pay attention, turn the ignition on without starting the car. What you're going to notice, if you listen, you're going to hear your pump working for a few seconds. And that's because the engine control computer is going to send a signal to the fuel pump relay and the fuel pump relay is going to send current through its wiring to the pump for a few seconds. What that does is it pressurizes the system that way when you go and start it it has the correct fuel pressure and starts right up. Now some other modern vehicles they are even more advanced. When you first open the driver's door it will go ahead and pressurize the pump right away. So once you get in your car and you try to start it, it starts right up no delay, no nothing. So different makes do it differently but the purpose is the same which is to pressurize the system before you start your car that way you don't have any delay and you don't have to crank it for a long period of time. Before the fuel reaches the injectors it has to go through a fuel filter. So as the fuel is sent from the supply line to the filter then from the filter it's going to go to the main line. So once the pump receives the current it starts working the fuel exits through the larger line okay, which is the supply line, goes through the filter and then enters the larger line of your fuel rail which is the supply line and as the fuel enters then the, f the injectors which are these okay, if it's a multi-port fuel injection system every cylinder is going to have its own injectors this is a V8, so you got one, two, three, four on one side, one, two, three, four on the other side. At the end of the fuel rail, there is a regulator, which this fuel rail is missing, but it's round and it has a vacuum line. So look for a round device bolted to the end of your fuel rail, and you'll know that that's your regulator. And that's the return line, so the return line goes back to the fuel pump module, and it just goes back into the tank. There's there's no need to be filtered again so you only have one filter and then like I said so it's the larger one that comes from your fuel pump module now here's something to consider the fuel pump of any vehicle is going to provide more pressure than what the system needs so for example let's say and we're just going to give a number okay don't don't quote me on this because every vehicle is going to be different you're going to have to research what your pressure should be on your own but let's just say that this particular multi-port fuel system requires 45 psi of pressure to operate correctly. What that means is that the fuel pump for that application is going to probably put out anywhere from 75 to 80 psi, which is a lot more pressure than what the system needs. But even though a fuel pump is going to put out a lot more pressure than what it needs, if the fuel just goes in and comes back out, without a fuel pressure regulator, the fuel pressure probably would never even reach 20 psi, which it wouldn't, the car wouldn't even start or even run. So at that point, the part that maintains the correct amount of pressure in a vehicle is called a fuel pressure regulator. So the fuel will enter the supply line, okay, it goes through the whole fuel rail. This fuel rail is missing the regulator, but it's bolted at the end, okay, so look for a round part that has a vacuum hose attached to it. That's your regulator. 
So like I said, the fuel enters here, and this is a V8 engine, so it goes through here. So it's already pressurizing all eight injectors. So this regulator is at the end. What the regulator function is, is to maintain the correct amount of pressure for each application. So like I said, we already have a pump that's putting out randomly 75 PSI, fuel enters the system, and the regulator is the one that's going to maintain the 45. So at that point, the excess pressure is going to exit and it's going to go back to the tank like we just described. Now, your car is going to have different demands. At idle, there's going to be a, a lower demand for fuel pressure than a wide open throttle. So that's why the regulator that goes here has a vacuum line because it maintains a certain pressure and when you floor it, the vacuum disappears. So the spring inside the regulator overcomes the vacuum and it, the pressure goes up by at least another 5 pounds. So that way there's more fuel entering the system and it doesn't get lean. Now, like I said, what I just described is about systems that have a return line. So let's go through it real quick. You got your engine control computer that when you either turn the key on or when you start your car, it doesn't matter, okay? So when the vehicle is operating, the engine control computer through its hardness will send the signal to the fuel pump relay, okay? That's normally going to be located on the main fuse box, usually under the hood, okay? So from the fuel pump relay, the current goes to the pump, okay? So as you can tell, each pump is going to have its own wiring. You have a positive and a negative. The other wire goes to the sending unit. So as the fuel pump receives current, it starts working. Fuel goes through the strainer, so it filters the debris that are in the tank. It goes through the line, goes through the filter, enters the fuel rail through the supply line, pressurizes it. The regulator, that, like I said, that's normally mounted right here, is at the end. Um, keeps the correct pressure, and the excess fuel just goes back through the tank to the return line. Now. There are other systems, okay, that for American-made vehicles you will find them somewhere like in uh, Chrysler's and obviously Jeep's and same thing. Those systems don't have an external regulator if you, and they're easy to identify because you're only going to see one line, just the supply line, that is it, that's all you're going to see. So, these systems and I don't have a pump here with me, otherwise I will show you what the difference is because the module is completely different. But right now, all you have to do is focus on the one line only. If your vehicle only has a supply line and you don't see a regulator anywhere in the fuel rail, then that's the system that I'm about to tell you. So those particular vehicles, the fuel pump module will have the regulator, a filter, all in one assembly. So, same thing, you probably won't even find a filter for these applications uh, in the entire fill line. Which is a good and a bad thing because when it gets clogged up then you gotta replace the whole thing and you're, and you're talking three, three to five hundred dollars. Versus when you get a filter that gets clogged up, that's ten to fifteen dollars. So big difference. And if your regulator starts malfunctioning on this kind of systems, you gotta pull the whole assembly out versus external regulator that you can just unbolt and bolt on. So for this application, you know, each one's going to have a port, okay, to test the fuel pressure with a fuel pressure gauge. And so a fuel pressure gauge is used to find out if a particular vehicle has the correct pressure, right? So it's just going to hook to the port. The gauges will just screw it to the test port of your system, okay, like that. And you can just read the pressure when you turn the key on or when you start the car. That's how simple it is to check the pressure on the multi-port fuel systems that have the test port. This one has its own test port too. Uh, this one just needs an adapter because this end is different, but every fuel pressure gauge should come with it. So, troubleshooting a few things, right? So, pressure. So now that you understand the operation of this system and realize that we're focusing on the delivery part of the fuel, we're not focusing right now on the remaining sensors, you know, like throttle position, MAP sensor, oxygen sensors, 
and all the other ones, okay, that enable the computer of the car to modify the pattern for the injectors so they deliver either more or less fuel under different driving conditions. We're focusing on the mechanical part, so to speak, of the fuel injection system. So, one of the things that would make a fuel injection system not work correctly would be lack of pressure, right? So, at this point, uh, this one, obviously, you hook the gauge. The one that doesn't have a return line, if you hook your gauge to it, and either when you have the key on or when it's running, the pressure is not what the vehicle is supposed to have, then at that point on a system like this, you're more likely going to have to replace the entire fuel pump module, okay, which like I already said they're expensive, but that's probably going to be the only way to go with this. Now, the one that has a return line, you troubleshoot it differently. So, you turn the key on and let's say the pressure is only 15 pounds. So, before you go and replace a fuel pump that you may not need, what you have to do is in between the engine and the frame, there's going to be rubber, a rubber section of line, okay? Make sure they're rubber and not hard plastic. So, just locate a section where there is a rubber line. And what you do is, put a towel so you don't damage the line, but you would put a towel and you would crimp the line Okay. to block the return. So you would block the return line with pliers and a towel in between it. At that point, the, and the reason for that, the reason why you would be doing this is because you're not enabling any fuel to go back to the tank at this point. So you turn the key on and then you should see the pressure that the pump is really putting out. So instead of being 20 pounds, if the regulator is defective, you would see a pressure go all the way up to 70 or 75, okay? So at that point you know that the pump itself is good and the regulator is the problem. So you remove your pliers and you replace your regulator and you're good to go. And so remember I'm emphasizing that you gotta fight a rubber section. This is a Ford system. This is hard plastic. So I wouldn't want to crimp it here. We'd have to find somewhere else where there is a rubber piece and if there isn't, if everything is either hard plastic or metal, then you may have to unhook it and put a plug. Okay. In either case, only rubber line can be pinched, not hard plastic or metal. So that's the basic operation okay, of the delivery part of it. You know, once we have this, just one last thing, uh, this is your sending unit. This is how you know how much fuel you have. When the float's all the way down, your gauge is going to read E. And as the flow goes up because you put fuel in it, it's going to go up to full. So this is a real stat. It changes the resistance. And this part changes as this arm moves. And the current goes through here all the way to your, to your gauge. In old vehicles, this would go directly to the gauge. Modern vehicles, it won't. It'll have to go through the computer first and then from the computer to your dashboard. Uh, as far as the relay itself, the reason why there's a need for a fuel pump relay to operate the fuel pump, the computer itself works on very low voltages. So it would be too high of a demand to power a pump through a computer that is powering so many other things. So instead, your ignition will send power to the computer, the computer sends low voltage to the relay. On the relay there, there are several wires, okay, you have a ground, you have a signal, you have the supply, you have the one that goes back to the system that's trying to operate. So at that point it has a low voltage coming in that is going to activate the relay. There is a larger wire that is going to be hooked directly to a fuse box that is going to be able to handle a higher amperage with its own fuse. So at that point the, the low signal is sent to the relay, relay activates, makes contact and it, the current that is coming from the fuse box goes directly to the pump and like I said it's a larger wire with a larger amperage fuse that way the computer doesn't overheat trying to power a pump. So that's the whole idea with the relay. 
So remember, these are the main components of the mechanical part of the multi-port fuel injection systems. We'll focus on some of the other sensors in other videos. I just wanted to focus on this part so it's easy to understand. So after watching this video, you should have a better understanding of how the multi-port fuel injection system works. And, like, and now you know what the main components are for the mechanical part of it. I will be explaining the function of the other sensors and how they affect the fuel delivery on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching today's video and we'll see you next time.